So viewers, today I am going to show you how to apply a lag screw. A lag screw is commonly used in orthopedics to achieve primary bone healing. So there are two ways you can use lag screw. Either you can use a partial threaded screw, uh, that is an easier technique. However, a lot of times we are facing fractures of the cortical bone and we have to use a fully threaded cortical screw in order to apply a lag. So today demonstration will be how to use a fully threaded cortical screw in large fragment and small fragment if you have to apply a lag screw. So before I demonstrate you how to do a lag screw, I would like you to focus on the basics of uh, why and what goes or uh, what is the idea behind doing the lag screw. So I have drawn this bone, this is the fracture line. Now if you are applying a lag screw, the first important principle of applying a lag screw is your screw should be perpendicular to the fracture. So if this is the fracture, your lag screw has to come absolutely perpendicular to the fracture line. Now when we talk about lag screw, we talk about gliding hole. So the first cortex is the gliding hole. If you are applying a lag screw from this direction, this will be the gliding hole and the second hole will be a pilot hole. Now the gliding hole is called gliding hole because it's big enough for screw to easily glide in it. So if you're talking about a small fragment screw that it's 3.5, so we will use a 3.5 mm drill bit so that it can easily glide in it. And same way if you are using a large fragment then you will use a 4.5 drill bit so that this becomes a gliding hole. So the pilot hole is also called as thread hole. Uh, for a small fragment we will use a 2.5 drill bit and for a large fragment the pilot hole we will use a 3.2 drill bit. So I have written here gliding hole as G, pilot hole as P. So if you see just to reinforce in small fragment gliding hole is 3.5 mm not 3.2 which commonly people think and pilot hole is 2.5 mm. Same for large fragment gliding hole is 4.5 mm and pilot hole is 3.2 mm. So next I will show you a demonstration of how to apply a lag screw. So for doing a lag screw you will require uh, certain equipments. I have, uh, I am here having the basic equipments that you will require if you are putting a lag screw. So let's talk about small fragment first. So the first thing, the first step of putting a lag screw will be to put a gliding hole. So the gliding hole we will require a 3.5 mm drill bit. For pilot hole we will require a 2.5 mm drill bit and of course for these when you are using this drill bit you require this sleeve and here it says 2.5 mm for the thread hole or pilot hole and 3.5 mm for gliding hole. Once you have made this hole then you would use a countersink and the countersink will create a space for screw head to go inside the bone so that it's not prominent and it's especially important if you are using a neutralization plate on top otherwise plate will not seat on the bone. Once you have done the countersink your next step will be to measure the depth of the screw. So this is a depth gauge then this is the tap if you are using a small fragment you are going to use a 3.5 mm tap and then you will require a screwdriver the hexagonal screwdriver for putting your lag screw. So now let's start on large fragment. So large fragment gliding hole will be 4.5 mm. So it's very easy if you're using a small fragment 3.5 mm set then three gliding hole is 3.5 mm. If you're using a large fragment 4.5 mm screw gliding hole will be 4.5 mm. For pilot hole or thread hole you will use a 3.2 drill bit and if you can see the sleeve that you will be using it here it says 3.2 for pilot hole and 4.5 mm for gliding hole and of course like small fragment you require a countersink so use a countersink and then use a depth gauge then you will use a 4.5 tap and then you will a screwdriver to put your um, right size screw. Now the main purpose of uh, a lag screw is to create compression to achieve primary bone healing. So just for demonstration purposes, just for us to demonstrate it easily that how it creates compression, I have just created a fracture 
on a plastic pipe and then we will follow each step of applying a lax screw. So first I will show you the small fragment and then the large fragment. So the first step if you are putting a lax screw is to put the gliding hole and the gliding hole will go through the first fracture fragment. I know there are certain people who will use pilot hole and then use gliding hole. I think if you use a gliding hole it has got its advantages and I will show you what it is. So I am going to create a gliding hole. So for small fragment we will use a 3.5 mm drill bit. So this is the first cortex gone. So this is our gliding hole done. So once you have done a gliding hole you should you can do a pilot hole and for doing a pilot hole this other part of the sleeve will actually go inside very easily and this will help you in putting the screw in the right direction. So that is why I always advise put the gliding hole first and then we will put the pilot hole. So next step will be to put the pilot hole and I am going to use a 2.5 mm drill bit. So after doing your pilot hole you should use a countersink and this is a plastic it will be hard to use a countersink but your idea is to use a countersink in order to create space for the screw head and then you should do the measure. So the next step will be to measure the right screw length and then it will be to do the tap. So once you have measured the size it's important to remember your direction and then send the screw in the same direction. And once we will tighten this hopefully this fracture gap that you are seeing should slowly disappear. So now you can see that the fracture site is now nicely compressed. As this is a plastic and the uh, margins of the plastics are very thin, um, it's not coming as good as it will come in a real uh, bone. But this is the principle that you should follow if you are applying a lag screw. Now next let's demonstrate what to do in a large fragment. Again we have created a fracture site um, on this plastic model and first we are going to make our gliding hole in large fragment so we are going to use a 4.5 mm drill. So in large fragment we have used a 4.5 mm drill to put our gliding hole. Now like in small fragment I am going to use this drill sleeve and it should go in the hole and once it is gone in you use a 3.2 mm drill bit. So again to reinforce it will be followed by countersink. So followed by measurement of the screw size. This will be followed by a tap. So in large fragment we use a 4.5 mm tap. This will be followed by putting a right side, right size screw. So now you can see this has uh, compressed the fracture site and on this side see the pipe is like this. Here after compression it's almost elliptical. So this is a good device to create compression at the fracture site. Now I have created two plastic models and this is the most important point that your screw should be perpendicular to the fracture site. If it's not perpendicular to the fracture site and if you put a lag screw you see this creates a slide and there is a step both on the top and on the bottom. So it's extremely important that you get your fracture uh, 
direction correct and you should place your screw 90 degree to the fracture direction. Now this is the second model in which we have tried to be at 90 degree to the fracture site. This is a plastic pipe and it's very hard to drill in the perfect direction but if you see here there is no translation at the fracture site. So try to be 90 degree to the fracture line orientation. So viewers this was a demonstration on how to apply a lag screw. If you are using a small fragment or a large fragment set, it is extremely important that you know the set in and out so that you use the right size drill bit in order to get a good lag screw for your fractures. I hope this video was useful. Do subscribe to our channel and do share this video.